Hi, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face here again on YouTube. So, a bunch of people have asked me, how do I use my Nikon camera as a webcam? So, I'm going to run through how to set up your Nikon Z or your Nikon DSLR and use it as a webcam. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. There is a piece of software. One or two things that may kind of fool you the first time around, but we'll run through it all. So works with a whole bunch of cameras. Basically, every Z series camera that they make from the Z9 all the way to the Z30. Um, it works with a bunch of mirrored cameras from the D6 all the way down to the D3500. So there's a lot of support there for uh, Nikon cameras. All you really need to do is have a USB-C cable to hook your camera up to. And actually, there's even a way around that, too, but you'd need an extra piece of hardware if you wanted to use HDMI. Now, I will tell you, you'll get better quality video if you do use HDMI, but it does require you buying a piece of hardware, and we'll go through that as well. So let's take a look at the Nikon website. I'll show you what piece of software you need to download, and I'm going to leave a link for it in the description of the video down below. Hey, and if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out uh, by hitting like, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell so you get updates from the channel. Uh, it's the best way to say thank you to me if this video helps you out in setting up your Nikon camera to use as a webcam. All right, let's take a look at the Nikon webpage. Okay, so you're going to need to download the Webcam Utility. It's a free piece of software from Nikon, and it comes in both Windows version and the Mac version. Make sure you get the latest version when you download it. All you really need to do is just click the link for the download page. Uh, you'll see here, if you open up product description, it'll give you the full list of support for the various cameras and a few things that are kind of nice to know because there is no product manual or anything like this or anything like that for, for this product. So scroll on down, accept the agreement, pick your region and hit that download button. After you've downloaded it, go ahead and install it the normal way. It's just a series of next, 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 next and finish if you're on Windows and continue, 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 finish if you're on Mac. Um, once you've installed it, that's it. You don't need to do anything. You don't ever need to run it. It just has to be installed on your computer. That's it. It's no piece of software to, to, to run. It just sits on your computer as a service. All right, so let's take a look at the next steps. Okay, so a few things that you're gonna wanna be aware of. For me on Windows uh, and USB, I had to make sure it was on the MTP slash PTP mode, not the iPhone mode. Okay, and that did help me out. In terms of power, if you're gonna connect this to a USB-C port, which you're going to need to for this to work, you might as well have USB power delivery on as well. So it uses the power from the computer rather than draining down the battery. Okay, I am demonstrating this, by the way, in the menus of a Nikon Z30, but these menus should be just about the same regardless of what camera you use. There may just be a few other little things uh, in between. Some cameras are not gonna have USB power delivery. So USB power delivery is on the Z5, uh, Z30, it's on the ZFC, it's on the Z5, it's on the Z62, Z72, Z8, Z9, and ZF. If you don't have those cameras, you're probably not going to have USB power delivery, so you won't have that option. So that is important to know. Okay, so the other thing that's important to uh, alter on the menu system of your camera is in the custom settings menu, go to C3 in most cameras. And uh, again, of course, the menu item could vary slightly depending on your camera. And you're going to look for power off delay. So go ahead and click into that. And standby timer, you want to set that to infinity. Okay, so just go to no limit and you'll see the little infinity sign there. And the reason why you want to do that is if you don't, the camera will actually power off, you know, during your, your webcam session and, and you don't want that. So you need to set that to infinity. And there's one other setting I want to show you. 
if you have connect to computer enabled, like let's say, for example, you had watched my wireless transmitter utility video, you need to have that off, okay? Uh, it will not function as a webcam if you're connected to things like Nikon Tether, Nikon Camera Control, uh, the Nikon wireless transmitter utility. So if that's the case, just make sure that this is set off. And you can see my wireless network here is, is states ending transmission, even though it's off. You would think it would say something nice like off, but it doesn't. It says ending transmission, but that's good enough. Uh, if it was in fact connected, if I had enabled this, uh, the Wi-Fi network would turn green. Uh, and you'll see as it connects, you're going to see what that's going to look like. And there we go. So now I'm connected to the wireless transmitter utility. Now I cannot use the Nikon Z30 or any Nikon camera that we're trying to use as a webcam, uh, as a webcam until we have that off. So that's going to be a gotcha. So make sure that that is disabled if you have that utility running. Okay. Really, that's about it for the menus. Okay. So two things that you're going to want to do in your video recording menu you're going to go over to focus mode and do make sure that it is set to full-time autofocus. You're going to want to use that. And then the area mode, I would highly recommend that you use auto area uh, AF mode with people. That way it will face track and, you know, stay with you regardless of whether you move in or out or left or right in the frame. So those are two things that you're definitely going to want to have set up. Okay, so I am here inside Zoom. And now to choose the Nikon Web utility. All you need to do is go down to the little video icon here at the bottom, click the little up carrot, and then just go over to Nikon webcam utility. Pick that and you'll be running off your Nikon camera for your Zoom meeting. And this procedure is going to work the same for most other apps. Okay, so in terms of a webcam, it would seem like using your Nikon camera would be a great idea, right? Hey, it's got 4K video, you know, super resolution, all sorts of great features. But the reality of it is, unfortunately, via the webcam utility, it's only delivering about 10 to 15 frames per second. So movement actually looks a little bit jerky when you're moving side to side or waving your hands in the webcam utility. Uh, also, we're not getting full resolution. So it's 1024 by 768 is the output resolution, so way below HD as well. So two big downsides there. Now, I do think in a pinch, it's a good thing. Maybe your webcam broke and you know you have to take a meeting. Maybe it's a telehealth, maybe it's a Zoom. The webcam utility is something you probably want to have installed for one of those, oh my goodness moments, or maybe you just don't have a webcam and this is just a, a free way of having a webcam and that's that's fine too. But in terms of being a great webcam, your Nikon camera is not going to be that because this utility, it's just, you know, not really sending enough information to, to really produce a high quality image, not sending enough frames, not sending enough resolution. Uh, in terms of lens choices, you're going to need a lens at least uh, smaller than 35 millimeter. I, I would say that that's going to be about your max and that's going to bring you super close. A 24 millimeter lens is probably going to be a better bet for you. So in terms of lens choices, somewhere around 24 would probably be the one that I would recommend. Okay, so there is one other way that you can use your Nikon camera as a webcam, and that's by not using the Nikon webcam utility. So in that case, you can get a third-party app like the EVGA XR1 Lite. That'll cost you about $89. And what it is is it's an HDMI capture card that's gonna go in between your camera and your computer. It'll connect the HDMI cable on one end and a USB-C on the other end out to your computer. And that will allow you to capture 1080p video, HD video at 60 frames per second from your Nikon camera. And it'll also pass through the 4K stream as well to a monitor or whatever else you may need to pass that stream through to. So that's a very good option. And again, that's probably gonna be your best bet if you want to use your camera as a webcam. So that would be the route that I would go. But let's not forget the webcam utility is completely free. And that is, of course, something that you can use if you don't want to shell out money for a webcam or a capture card to allow your camera to be used as a webcam. And it's going to work the same way. So in Zoom, you're just going to go down to that little up carrot. And instead of 
selecting Nikon webcam utility, you would select the capture card that you had purchased. So I'll leave a link for that uh, down in the video description, as well as a link for the software from Nikon. All right, so that basically covers the webcam utility from Nikon. So I hope this video has helped you out. And of course, if it has, please let me know in the comments. Uh, leave me a thank you or just say hello. I always love to hear from you guys, and I'll be happy to uh, say hello back. I appreciate you. Of course, without you, there is no channel. So thank you for watching. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video, YouTube. And of course, if anything in this video has helped you out, help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell so you get notified of future updates. I very much appreciate that. Thanks. Bye-bye.